Okay, welcome back, another episode, episode nine, load of balls, and uh, we're gonna carry on with the theme of the uh, it's like a mid-price ball, I suppose you'd call it. Um, and it's gonna be the Callaway Super Soft. A big selling golf ball for Callaway, and uh, very, very popular. I think, again, very much um, price-driven. I'm gonna be basing my sort of uh, price um, evaluation based on around 20 pound, um, British pounds, and I think you can perhaps even get them a little bit cheaper than that at times as well. But anyway, let's get stuck straight into the review. I'm not gonna go through the sort of technical blurb that is being spouted by the manufacturer. I feel like I'm repeating the same message. We know that they wanna get yardage off a driver and spinning in the short game, and it's pretty much like I said, I'm repeating a message every week. So I think we can skip that bit and we can get straight into the nitty gritty. We're gonna start, let's start the short end dry ball data and um, I think really, I've said it, and I'm gonna end up probably saying it for every week from now on in, I think. I've only really seen a couple of big noticeable differences. TP5 has seen a lot of ball speed, and in the um, Callaway Chrome Soft 2018, I've seen a lot of spin with the mid iron, the seven iron, uh, which I don't normally achieve. Other than that, I've not seen a great deal of difference uh, in numbers achieved in dry ball data. I really haven't, but anyway. Um, Nothing wrong with this one, super soft, spinning at 9.7 on average. Um, carry distances, relatively consistent when, the, when you relate them to ball speeds. Um, and once again, uh, launch, bit of variables in the launch there, but again, nothing majorly standing out one way or another. Uh, numbers now into the seven iron. Quite like the seven iron number to be fair, five four on average, but a couple of spins there at five seven, which again, um, Oh, everything's based on strike, but again, five, seven spin for me, very decent number to be fair. And again, this ball, it is soft, as the name suggests. Um, more stability in terms of launch angle, again, which will be about my delivery of the club head. Um, but once again, nothing major standing out there so far. So straight out on the course, we're at Almanara Resort again. Um, did a slightly different green. I did a few balls on here, but not a lot. Tried to uh, throw a bit of variety in there, but also keep it fair so that everybody was on a similar um, surface. So, uh, 30 yard-ish, maybe a little bit more than that chip shot. Uh, tried to keep it fairly low when you're looking for a bit of, bit of response on the turf, a um, bit of traction. Biggest, for me, the biggest thing that has opened my eyes in terms of the testing whole process with the golf balls that I found particularly interesting is the camera placed on the green um, for this shot in. Um, because this is, we as average golfers uh, don't hit a lot of greens in regulation. So arguably this is the difference between uh, scoring bogey, scoring par. If you've got a decent short game and you can get a ball close to that hole and make your up and down, then obviously scores will drop. It's a part of the game that I've neglected and it's a part of the game where I'm not gonna tell anybody at this stage the ball I would was gaming or the, game or the ball I will gain going forward. But let's just say I didn't pay a lot of money and I obviously didn't pay enough attention because this is where for me things start to get different. And you see with the super soft, the performance I'd say is okay. So the ball comes in, it kind of stops and rolls. And to be fair, I played other balls on this green. It was, if you threw it too far, it didn't quite hold. But then I'll also say I paid a premium ball. The video's not been out yet on this same green. And the difference in checkup is incredible, to be fair. But I won't spoil that one. That video is yet to come out. Um, so the, But the ball performed okay. And I'd say if you look at it again, what I say the same thing. It's not so bad if it's consistent. If you know what you're going to get, the ball grabbed, but it didn't grab a lot, and it's still released. So I'd be I'd be slightly concerned about that. Onto the putter, um, which I talk about feel, and again, a very, very personal thing. So I won't just relate it to, um, well, I will relate it to putting shortly. What I will say is that with the long game, off the club, again, it's quite a soft feeling golf ball. And I suppose, like I said, as the name suggests, wouldn't be necessarily my cup of tea, 
but at the same time, you know, I've, I've hit worse things. I've, I've, you know, I mean, it ain't no Callaway Warbird, which is like hitting a brick, but, uh, so I prefer this than others. But um, the, the, the issue for me is more the feel into the hands. It seemed just too soft around the greens. And again, maybe that's in relation to the kind of the putter face that I use, but it was a little bit too soft to give me any great feedback into the hands on the putter. Um, I was impressed with, again, this is 100-ish yards in. It's downwind, and from where we're looking at the green, it's sloping from left to right. So, ball comes in on both occasions. A quite good wedge shot, so I wouldn't mind taking a few of them. Um, and I'd already got a couple close from uh, another ball we tested. Very unusual. Uh, but the ball reacted well enough. Um, it's not exactly fizzing back, but you've got to remember it's downwind, so it'll be taking spin off. Um, and I think, again, more than good enough performance in those situations. Um, so for me, I mean, let, let's get straight into scoring. Uh, we don't need, or I don't need to waffle on anymore, I don't suppose. Dry ball data, I said at the beginning, it's almost one of them things where I wish I didn't put it in the test in many respects because it's not telling us a great deal. But then I suppose, like I said, even in the TP5 and the Chrome Soft uh, 2018, it has at least allowed those to stand out. But in the main, numbers have been good. And again, another nine out of 10, which like I said, that's been fairly consistent in my scoring. Feel, I've, I feel like I can't be too critical because I don't think this necessarily the soft feeling is such a bad thing because you know that's going to appear. I'm trying to review these with, with everybody in mind. And I don't think it's a real negative. It just be, wouldn't be something I would personally choose to game in terms of a ball being that soft. So I'm going to score it a 7.5. Right, I was in mid-flow there and the memory card went, so uh, hopefully we're back on. And I was about to talk about the way in which I would establish my scoring for value. And the, the scoring is subjective. It's all about, like I said, it's a bit of a guide. And don't forget, the only thing that matters, you watch the video and you kind of score it yourself, really. But um, the way I look at value is this. I try and give an overall performance. What are you getting for your money? Um, in relation to its price tag. And then this this is the way I would summarize this, at 20 pound for a Callaway golf ball that performs reasonably well across all criteria. That's the way I'm looking at it. And for that reason, I'd give it an 8.5. I think for 20 pound a dozen, you're getting a half decent golf ball, let's say. And therefore value for money, I think that's about right for this. You're getting what you pay for, no doubt about it. Maybe a little bit more than what you pay for. So it gives it an average, oh no, no, I'm jumping a gun here. Performance, first of all, overall performance. I've just mentioned it in value. I think overall, from the driver, from irons, from short game into putter, it's kind of, it's, it's good across the board without being great across the board. And I think that's what I said about it represents it in price as well, uh, the performance does. Again, depending on where and when you're playing. If you're in the middle of winter and you're playing, you're, ball's plugging in a fairway, you're losing balls under leaves, your greens are holding any ball, they'd hold a Callaway Warbird, then this Super Soft is probably a decent enough ball to play in those conditions. I'm not sure on a windy day it's going to perform as well as a Callaway Chrome Soft would do, but there you go. You probably wouldn't choose to spend that kind of money playing those kind of conditions. So, and vice versa, if I was playing in the height of summer on firm greens, I wouldn't be playing the super soft golf ball expecting to get the kind of performance that I would hope for. Now, it then boils down to, like I said, about price, the money in your pocket and what you're prepared to pay. But the biggest learning curve I've had in all these videos is that, I said it in the last one, there are variations in golf balls, there is, which I don't say caught me by surprise. I expect it to be differences, but round the short game, there are big differences for me. And I'm saying a short game, and then I think about some of the golf balls I hit with the Chrome Soft off the tee and how consistent the ball flight was. Again, I just think that uh, there's an element of finding golf balls. You've got two choices. You either go with a golf ball like the Vice Pro, the DX3, which is offering great value and great performance, or you stick your hand in your pocket and you get the top of the tree, the likes of the Chrome Soft, and we haven't done the Pro V, but no doubt that'll be up there as well in terms of performance, I would expect. So. You know, it's all about what's in your pocket. Super softball, I think, it sits about average, let's say. So they might suit the average golfer, who knows. Anyway, 
I'm going to leave it there. Waffled on quite a bit there, trying to get my whole point to a close. But I hope you enjoyed that one. Next couple of videos up, let me think we've got. I've got Strix and AD Treble 3, mustn't be far away. And I've got another golf ball from Vice. And then I've got a golf ball from Seed. They will all continue in this sort of price bracket that we've been looking at in the last couple of weeks, or a couple of videos at least. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, I keep uh, posing and trying to wear this uh, average golfer caps and hats and whatever else and if you do get a chance uh, and you fancy any of those uh, average got the average golfer.com and uh, yeah get yourself a cap anyway i'm going see you soon